Hello everyone, it's Friday October 14 and it seems like the honeymoon's over. Whether we were going through the eye of the storm so to speak or not, but I don't know. But uh, we got an earthquake in eastern New Guinea, a 6.7, it's a pretty decent sized earthquake. We look at the seismographs, as you can see here. pretty big. This is not quite the earth wobble events that we've had in the past, but this is significant earthquake for sure. Yeah, moved quite a bit. Okay, so the magnitude 6.7 in Papua New Guinea was at 3:35 a.m. UTC, and on Celestia. As we can see, that's just past the Jupiter alignment. In fact, we're about 12 hours past the Jupiter alignment. I'd expect it to quieten down a little bit and not peak again until we get closer to the Pleiades alignment, which occurs around midday on the 15th of October. But of course, it could be early, it could be late, but I'd expect more on the early side rather than the late side. Because if the theory is correct about the Earth-Moon alignment being parallel to the tails of comets, for example, a comet or comets, in this case with Alan and there's probably more than one, then the time we get round to the 15th is actually getting out of that alignment and anything after that as we come around to Orion would actually be almost perpendicular. So I wouldn't expect much following the Pleiades alignment. However, as things seem to be going at the moment, you could probably expect something else happening just before the official Alan alignment, which would be about on the 18th I guess. So by the time we get around to the 18th, thereabouts, whatever is or may be ahead of element, or it could just be the tail heading out this way that we're pointing to, could trigger another out of the blue kind of earthquake. One interesting observation is that clock synchronization has returned to normal. It's actually very easy to synchronize the clocks, and they're only one second behind my Casio now, and they're both in sync with each other. And that seems to be a recurrence of the pattern we've seen in the past where these major earthquakes seem to cause this synchronization problem to evaporate. Okay, so they are both in sync. I'll be doing the clock times in a moment and uh, we'll see if the clocks have moved much. But I wouldn't expect too much movement to these clocks uh, simply because it's only been a few hours since the big earthquake. So if they have recovered in their speed, I don't think they would have recovered much, but we'll see what happened. Okay, I've just updated the clock times, and this is what the clocks look like compared to the internet server time, as I can get it synced, that is, including that bug which I referred to in the last video. So they've returned back to normal, basically, in terms of where they were, and it's interesting because that's actually the opposite or the mirror of what was actually happening on the 23rd to the 25th, and on the 26th they returned back to normal, of September that is. In October 14, we've got this mirror of that happening. And we've seen these sort of things happen in the past, okay, ex with the exception of this, of course. We have to slow down and then return to normal. And these are on the same sort of intervals. So is there any relationship between the peak and synchronization problems, here and here, for example, and the parallel alignment between the Earth and Moon and the tail of this object going around the Sun? So let's draw a line between the Earth and Moon in green and a line in the opposite direction in red. Now we can put these on the top down view of the solar system and move the line so that it's coming from the Sun, representing the direction of a tail of an object that was passing around the Sun, since we're looking at parallel lines between the Earth and Moon and a tail of an object going around the Sun. So let's repeat this for all the dates where synchronization error reached a maximum. The first date here is actually October 12, synchronization is running behind. The next date showing is September 26, and synchronization is running ahead. The next date showing is September 9, and synchronization is running behind again. And the next date showing is August 24, and synchronization is running ahead. As you notice, when synchronization is ahead, the moon's on this side of the Earth, synchronization behind, the moon's on that side of the Earth. And the pattern those are all four observations. The next thing I'd like to plot in this diagram 
is the pattern of minimums that occur between the daily difference between high and low tides. And for example, we're looking at the buoy in the North Pacific here, and this actually follows a correlation between the alignment between the moon and Orion. Unlike what you'd expect, which would be an alignment between the sun and moon, if you look at the sun and moon, you find that it actually doesn't correlate at all. And you'll find this pattern occurs across other seas, like in the South Pacific near the Chatham Islands. This is a Jupiter alignment. Of course, the Jupiter alignment is a little bit different because when the moon's in opposition to Jupiter, we get the largest difference in high and low sea levels. But when it's in alignment with Jupiter, we get the lowest difference. As opposed to on this diagram, you see you get a, a maximum occurs on the opposition as well as the alignment. We also got the same thing occurring off the coast of California, where there's a very strong correlation between the sun moon alignment and the daily differences in high and low sea levels. So let's go back and have a look at this data from the northern Pacific, which correlates strongly to the moon Orion alignments. And something unusual about this is when you pull up the moon Ellen alignment, we find the minimums occur on the alignment with Ellen. And it's not just for this part of the ocean. We also look at it off the coast of Japan, and you see the pattern is still there. We can look at it off the coast of Alaska, and you see the pattern is still there. And if we pull up Hawaii, for example, which is correlated to the sun and moon, and we take out the sun and moon off this chart, and we add Alanin, you see the pattern continues. We'll see that the Alanin alignment still seems to correlate to the minimums, whether it's in alignment with the moon, or opposition to the moon. These points still keep on coming up. And we're going to have a look at California again. And the same thing. Alanin, for whatever reason, seems to be correlating to these minimums. However, in the last few weeks, this alignment has drifted off a little bit. And the last measurement is back to exactly where it should be. So now I'd like to plot these points on the chart and see what we find. So let's start back at February 20 of this year. The sun's here, the earth is over here on the left of the sun, and Alan is way over here on the far left. In our diagram, we're looking at the solar system a little bit closer, and the sun is still here, the earth is here, and Alan is still off to the far left. And Alan will eventually track in around like this. So the first one we're going to add in is February 20. The next one is on March 6. The next one is March 19. Next one, April 1st, then April 14, April 28, May 12, May 26, June 10, June 23, July 8, July 22nd, And August 8. So it does seem like we could be tracking something coming in from the left. It does seem to be like a trajectory that's correlating to these alignments, the sea level minimums. So let's see if these lines we've got showing sea level change minimums intersect with the radial lines we've got coming from the sun showing the synchronization error maximums. So these aren't going to be perfect but it's going to be good enough for the time being. So the first one is a sea level minimum on the 18th of August, and we had a sink ahead error on the 24th, and that would put the object perhaps somewhere about here. And they've got another sea level minimum on August 31st, and there's no sink ahead error or sink behind error to go with that. Then we've got a sink behind error on September 9 and a sea level minimum on September 13. Now that's kind of unusual because it would put the object right about there, which is inside of Mercury's orbit. Okay, so it's come around wide, but it looks for it down low, and swung in over Mercury's orbit. So we've got a sink ahead error on September 26, and we've got a sea level minimum on September and finally, we've got a sea level minimum on October 9, and a sink behind error on October 12. And if we pull up 
the latest chart showing where Elenin is, we'll find that that intersection is actually very close to where Elenin is supposed to be at this point in time. However, looking at the trajectory, it doesn't seem to quite match Elenin at all. Firstly, it comes out too wide, and then we seem to have a pattern showing something coming in very close to the sun and out where Elenin is now. One possible explanation for that is we're looking at things in 2D with Elenin's some sort of patsy. Uh, I don't think Elenin is the object in question. And uh, if we're looking at a hyperbolic curve, then perhaps it's not on the plane of the ecliptic, not on the same plane as the Earth. We're thinking in 2D when actually this thing's moving in 3D. It was coming in wide but high or low swung over and it's now swinging down back to the ecliptic now or up to the ecliptic depending upon which way this curve is going and finally it might break the ecliptic sometime up here or perhaps it's swinging up high coming down but never breaks the ecliptic until it's long gone or perhaps we're looking at two different objects one that was coming in swung round and is gone either from passing through the ecliptic and heading off so far out of alignment that it doesn't affect us anymore and as the second object came through on a hyperbolic coming up like this around and down or down around and up it's hard to say one thing's for sure is Alan in itself is not the object and it is some sort of patsy however it is interesting to note that Alan in at the moment is now close to this intersection point. And of course there may be no connection at all between objects in the cosmos and these synchronization issues or clock speed up and slowdowns. Well it's already October 17 and it's been very quiet generally for the last couple of days. Nothing really happened. Seismographs at this moment are looking like this. Pretty plain, very quiet. It's a good sign. A few smaller quakes before. That's about it, really. Looking on the charts, the only spike we really had was on the Jupiter alignment, which is this one here. And then a little bit later on the Pleiades alignment, there was really nothing that much happened. The Orion alignment's coming up. That will be tomorrow. Uh, we might get something on that, but I expect 18, 19. For this Allen and Patsy Allen alignment thing. If the something happens there, then it's indication that there might be something out there in that position in the sky. If nothing happens at all, well, it doesn't look good for Allen or the whole Allen and saga. It looks like it might be drawing to a close. And that would be good news, wouldn't it? Okay, so thank you for watching, and uh, I'll keep you updated.